hold our head high. As a people, as a whole, there are a thousand million Muslims in the world, and as a people, as a whole, we don't like that stuff. It is our children who have been spoiled by you, the Westerners. They, we send them to your universities, in your environment, your girls were freer to, to play with, you know, going to the dance, this, that, that, and you want to ply her with alcohol so you can weaken her resistance, so you have to also play the tune. You have to also imbibe, and you can become alcoholic. This is a sickness. See, it's a disease. Some of us, we have it in our metabolism, that the first sip will land you in the, land you in the gutter. You know that? Safety lies in abstinence. And the only religion on the face of the earth which has don't touch that abomination is Islam. Solves your problem. What creates the biggest society of teetotals in the world? All the born-again Christians, 75 million born-again Christians in America. That nation with one-third of its people born-again angels. They say they sin no more. One-third, 75 million. Says, Jimmy Swag, uh, says Billy Graham in his book, How to be Born Again. One-third. And this is having no effect on the people. 55 million drunkards. In a nation with 75 million born again. And Jesus Christ said, a little leaven, leaven at the whole. You need a little yeast to ferment the whole loaf. You don't need so much yeast, a little bit. But if you have one third yeast, and if it doesn't ferment the loaf, I was telling the Americans, I said there's something wrong with your yeast, or something wrong with your flour. No? One third yeast, and still it doesn't work. With us, we have our shortcomings. We are not angels. But let us be exemplars. Let us preach, because when you start speaking, it is conducive to us changing our own lives. You can't benefit, I mean, you can't change. You will be changing by talking good to others. It must have influence upon your life, it will. Unless you are an out and right rank hypocrite. Which I think there are very few like that in the world. So with these words, Mr. Chairman, uh, and my brothers and sisters, I take leave from this talk and I pray that may Allah bari ta'ala make us to meet again. Uh, and for the time being, if you have any questions, I'm at your disposal. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. As you have said, uh, there is a plenty of evidence of prophethood of Hazrat Muhammad, peace be upon him, in uh, Semitic religions. Have you come across any such reference in uh, Aryan religions? Yes, I had read a book by Maulana Vidyarthi, Muhammad in World Scriptures, and he gives numerous uh, proofs, quotations from the Vedas and the other books of the Hindus. But uh, since now, this is really not a problem. Like in my country, the Hindus, they don't know anything about the Vedas. If I ask a Hindu whether he has read the Ramayana, he says no. Whether he's read the Bhagavad Gita, he says no. Whether he's seen a Veda, he says no. So therefore, it is not profitable to waste time about a thing which the man knows nothing about. In other words, now we must teach him about the Vedas. And before we say, now look, in the Vedas there's such and such a thing. So therefore, I have not dealt with that aspect. It was your question. Yes. Therefore, I don't deal with that aspect simply because there is no need. That type of clientele is not there. Mr. D, that you have demonstrated that the early Christians were in the habit of translating, either translating proper names or changing or Hellenizing or Latinizing proper names. Like you have demonstrated, they have translated, uh, you know, or changed the, 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 the proper name Jesus, Esau, into Jesus, and Cephas into Peter. So I think probably it would be very useful, you know, for the other people, if you could touch, we can assume, I mean, you have demonstrated actually that in English, only in English, in, in, in the various versions of the Bible, you have three, three names, three translations of, of the person who is spoken of in the, in the verse of John, which you have read. One is advocate, one is uh, uh, comforter, and the other one is a counselor. And I mean, in my knowledge, in my reading of, of some comparative religion, I, I know that, I, that the Greek word is, par, is parakletos. I have also read in some Islamic literature, or some Muslim scholars assume that the original word, which I also assume, the Greek word parakletos, which must have been translated either from Aramaic or Hebrew, that in turn it has been 
either distorted or deliberately changed by the early Christians so that, would, that they would preclude any prophecies after Jesus. Could you possibly elaborate a little bit on the word parakletos? Because I have read that it's, it was supposed to be parakletos, which means the praised one. Could you please elaborate for the benefit of those people who have something to say about this? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, in the current Greek scriptures, the word there is parakletos. Parakletos, which is, means comforter, it can be translated advocate, it can be translated counselor. But in classical Greek, there is no such word as parakletos. The classical Greek is perikletos. And perikletos means the exact translation of Muhammad, the praised one. So this is what our scholars say, see, that the word ought to be perikletos and not parakletos. And it is an ex perikletos is an exact translation. Muhammad, the praised one, perikletos, meaning the praised one. I hope that clarifies your question, yes. I will seek your indulgence to ask a small A little louder. So yeah. <clears throat> uh, there is a small point which I wanted a clarification on and an elaboration upon. I, during my study of this subject which you had taken up, had come across two particular predictions uh, <clears throat> which I vaguely remember now which you can elaborate upon because of your uh, intense and extensive knowledge of uh, the Bible and the Old Testament. And two instances wherein the advent of Prophet Muhammad is mentioned in either the Old or the New Testament. One is the geographical location in Faran, which is mentioned in the, Bible, in, 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 in the Testament. And the other is a mention of seven thunders, which is, which I read in a commentary, refers to the seven verses of Surah Fatiha. Now, if you kindly, if I, I, I recollect these two instances correctly, if you could kindly elaborate upon these two instances. Thank you. I think I remember saying at the outset, that there are numerous prophecies in the Bible. There is a mention about 10,000 saints. There is about Kedah, which is Arabia, you know, the tribes of uh, the, the, the Quraysh, and so on. There are numerous prophecies in the Bible as it exists, regarding Islam and regarding the Holy Prophet Muhammad. But I believe that it is not profitable to generalize like that. You say, oh, they are numerous, and I say, it's this one, and that one, and that one, and that one. You give one, you give two, and you prove your case. This is now, let us reason about this now. Does this convince you? It fits Muhammad like a glove. Where is your candidate? In the book of Deuteronomy, we have another. I have written a book on the subject. The whole book is based on that one verse from the book of Deuteronomy. But we never dealt with it at all tonight. What for? That itself calls for an hour's lecture. So this one an hour, that one an hour, another it says three hours, four hours, five hours, just talking about prophecies, I'll make you drunk with knowledge. You see, it's not profitable that way. Rather, take one thing, prove your case. Take one thing, when I take this subject, Deuteronomy 18:18. 18, 18. It says that I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. The same thing in Arabic. In Hebrew, If I deal with that, then you deal with that. If you deal with this, you deal with that. But you start generalizing, you say, you know, this one too, and that one too. The guy says, no man, you, you, are now, you know, this is too far.